Salutations viewers, my name is Game Dame and welcome back to one of my Legends of Runeterra patch notes review where we are on 3.19.0. Now they have a lot of buffs and a lot of nerfs today to just a lot of cards uh, and sorry I did lose my voice over the weekend so I'm sorry if it's a little annoying but please bear with me here but we're going to start off with the champions and related card buffs and I love how they're going in different directions on how to present this information. So with Varus, uh, he got a buff, so he no longer needs to target eight allies, but only seven. So that uh, level up requirement gave him more opportunities to shoot his stuff. And now for Jinx, you no longer have to completely empty your hand for a super mega death rocket, the SMDR. Uh, on her level up, you will get one, but you cannot create another one that turn. So they did explain that Jinx has struggled to be competitive for some time. So I think uh, because emptying your hand is a hefty price to pay, and especially with so many ways, they so many different types of regions that you can use to like totally negate Jinx. So I like that they did this with her to bring her back into the competition. Uh, with Jax, he wasn't seeing much play, so they took down his requirement of dealing 15 plus damage to 12 plus damage. And then snip, snip, snip for Gwen's second ability. Uh, they didn't... I'm just going to read this one here because I know some people get confused. Originally, it was drain one from the enemy nexus one time for every two power Gwen has. And now it's drain two minimum. So we, they don't want leveling up your champion to feel like a downside when they can avoid it. Uh, with that in mind, they're giving leveled up Gwen, uh, Gwen's snip a minimum of two damage to make sure she always have a little off the top. So Seraphine saw a lot of play, but she and so now she's getting nerfed. So instead of six plus new spells, it's nine plus new spells. And then the fan club president uh, went from a four cost to a five cost. Now that's actually pretty cool that this kind of card saw a lot of play because it's manifest a spell that costs five and set it to a cost of two, which is pretty gross. Uh, Tumble used to be a three cost, now a four cost. And then Vane's reduced the cost of tumble by three is now reduced the cost to zero. So I'm going to read this one a little bit because this one uh, is can be a little confusing. So Vayne tumbled her way into a lot of tier one decks. Um, but her ability to supply free attacks and rake in rallies with scout proved to be too potent. So they changed tweaking level two's vein cost reduction to ensure a leveled vein that still packs a punch. Uh, but they have this separate tumble now a four cost and it's a slow spell which it always has been uh to cast eight spells for lee sin it now is casting 10 spells now this is a bit of a nerf for him but you could say this it's still doable but it's probably going to just take you a little longer for your desired effect and then there the warlord's horde and warlord's palace the countdown both of them went from eight to nine so that was a bit of a nerf so you got to wait one more turn um swain he got a bit of a nerf in his attack. So instead of a 4-6, he's a 3-6, and that applies to his level 2. Instead of being a 5-7, he's a 4-7 now. Ionian Telstones used to be Healing Potion and Homecoming. Now it's Gruesome Theater and write a Ritual of Renewal. Because they said Telstones are meant to be versatile tools, but Ionia's versions were too good. So they had to switch them out. Um... And then Shimon Wind, uh, it used to be Burst, now it's a Focus, so it takes a little bit longer, but it's still a really valuable card. I don't think this is too bad, to be quite honest. Uh, Relentless Pursuit, it used to be a Grand Ally, plus one, plus one, and Rally, but now it is just Rally. So that is, I don't know if we're going to see as much play with this card, but it's still, it, I think it's okay. I don't think it's good anymore, just because they took away that plus one, plus one. But we'll see how people play around with this. And then with Golden Aegis, it used to be a four cost. Now it's a five cost. Curse of the Tomb used to be a two cost. Now it's a three cost. Still a burst spell, so don't worry about that. Saga Seeker was a one, two. Now it's a one, one. So it's a one mana, one, one. Uh, faded still. So, I mean, his faded Pantheon and his faded friends have been strong for a little bit. So uh, we, won't, we may still see this card just because it, it's pretty good curve-wise. But... It no longer has the amount of health that it did. Uh, Ionian Hookmaster. Now, this one's different. She used to be a 1-1. One, one, now, she's a 0-1. So, she's a 2-mana 0-1. Uh, so, she won't be able to hit anything unless 
you buff her. But they said their finest Fisher has done a great job of enabling different equipment synergies with her improvised. But um, that she saw way too much play, so they lower they just don't have her doing anything <laughs> power wise. Now we have variety card buffs, which is very interesting. I see again this they are trying different formats, which I like. So far, this format is not that bad. So they have Paparo the Great, where it used to be create a Yordle. Uh, to now uh, summon a Yordle, grant other allied Yordles, and then grant all Yordles. So, Bandle City has gone a lot of live balance tuning, and this is a lot of changes. Um, and now, they're... <sighs> yeah, Yordle domination. Yordle unity. So, this this one uh, will only now grant all allies, Yordle allies, plus one, plus zero. Swall Scout... Uh, Redesign so three cost two two when I'm summoning grant me a one plus one plus one for each Yordle ally I don't even remember. I didn't play Yordle decks that much So I don't know too much about Yordle Stuff, but this is really cool. They added the redesign aspect into it is pretty much means Yeah, we needed to change this card from the ground up So now Yordle newbie is a one cost zero two and when you summon another Yordle give me plus two plus zero this round so these are really nice. Uh, I like Yordle Newbie because it's a, such a low cost card, especially when you just have a deck of pure Yordle synergy. Uh, now they have Shatter, it used to be a two cost, now it's a one cost. So now this is this had a slight buff, even though it's still a slow, but they didn't take anything out of it. Uh, Rimfang Wolf used to be a three two, now it's a two three, so they flipped the stats. I don't know if this is a buff or a nerf just because the stats have been flipped, but this uh, Rimfang Wolf is now more of a defensive card than an offensive card, but it's still a challenger, which makes it still offensive, but I'll leave you guys to decide whether it's good or not because I feel like it could go either way depending on your play style. <laughs> uh, okay, just got to drink a little bit of water here. Mmm. Yes, my water bottle is green. <laughs> Troll Scavenger used to be a 1 3, now it's a 0 4. Uh, I also don't know if this is completely a nerf because now it's a little bit tankier, but I mean, it is just be it is still a nerf because no longer has any attack. But that's okay because this card is still a 2 mana. 0 4 is actually still not that bad, especially when I'm summoning. If you have Behold. An 8 cost card grant me plus 3 plus 0. So that's still really fucking good. So it would be a 3, 4 if uh, if you behold an 8 plus card. That's pretty nice. Um, so I think it really depends on the situation. It could be clutch. It could just be trash. <laughs> Hex Splitterator uh, was 5 damage. Now it's 6 damage. Got a little bit of a buff right there. Celestial Impact also heals your... This is new. So obliterate a unit... Or a landmark, heal your nexus for three. That is a nice buff right there, just in case you are running low on health. Uh, they have Raven Bloom Conservatory. Used to be counts all 12. Now it's 11, so that's a bit of a buff. Uh, you got Lord Broad Main. He was a 2 4, now he's a 3 5. Got a plus one, plus one stat. So that is a nice buff. Uh, Sainin used to be a 3 3, now it's a 3 5. So a 6 mana 3 5 is, actually makes a lot more sense. Uh, and I really like this buff for Sainin. And then Laurent Doulis, uh, he got a redesign, which is really cool. So two costs, two, two, and then play Granite Ally and Hand Challenger, which is really nice. I can't even remember what his previous text was. I haven't played in a while. I know I played him a lot uh, in the beginning, but so many different types of decks out there now. Now Ibarros, then he's literally the uh, the art that was chosen for this too. He was a zero zero. Now he's a one one, a nine mana one one. But keep in mind, he has a plus one, plus one for each card you've drawn this game. I can only be blocked by enemies with four or more power. He is a very, very good card, uh, especially if you have them later on. But if you draw him early, that might be a problem. Um, but especially if you need more like low-cost cards in your hands. I hate getting late-game cards in my hands. But sometimes it's nice when you're like mid to late game and you're like, all right, I could really use this card right about now. Safety Inspector used to be a 6 cost 6-6. Six, six, now it's a 5 cost 5-5. Five, five. So uh, I would say a nerf in stats, but a buff in cost. So it's still kind of the same thing. It's, it didn't really suffer anything that much. It just minus 1 on everything. So I think that's fair. 
Uh, escaped Abomination, 4-2 to 3-3. This was a bit of a nerf. Um, no longer for power, but it is a little bit more balanced, so it could have a little bit more survivability. But I only say it's a nerf just based off the it does less damage now, but I think a 2-mana 3-3 three, three is still really good. Bone Club, it was a change from plus 4, plus 4 to plus 5, plus 5. Now that is a buff. Shadow Blade Fanatic used to be a 3-2. Now it's a 3-3. Three, three. You got a slight buff in the health department. Wrathful Rider used to be a 7-3. Now it's an 8-3. So that's a bit of a buff in the attack department, which is nuts. Uh, Gore Lift used to be a 0-10. Now it's a 0-12. So they said it hasn't scaled well with modern power level of the game. So they're giving a bit more ability. So this could be really good because uh, he's now a plus 12. So it gives him a little bit more health. When I, I remember when he summons swap his health and your nexus health, it, I can't be blocked by enemies with less health than me, which is really nice. Um, Dusk Rider used to be a five cost three five. Now it's a four cost three four. I would say this is a, this isn't too bad. I mean, they only took one away in the health and they took one away for the cost, but they didn't suffer the damage. So it might die a little bit easier, but it'll, you'll be able to put it out a little bit faster on on curve too if you want to do it that way uh reavers row used to be five cost now it's four cost that is a nice buff spirits unleashed change plus one plus one now granted to allies everywhere so grant allies everywhere plus one plus one then deal one to everything create udir in your deck and they said udir's champ spell is left a lot to be desired so i like this change rock colossus create copy now costs four costs so I can't remember what it was, how much cost, but it looks like they said this Colossus was feeling more like wrong Colossus considering how little use it was seeing. So they sent it back to Orange Forge for a bit of a tune-up, which if that was the case, then hopefully we get to see more play of that card. Dark and Ballista, uh, change no cells damage upon equip, which is nice. And then Pathless Ancient, cost two less for each unit recalled this round, um, which is nice. Void Seeker can now hit champions after you've evolved. So when they said they saw Kaisa seeing a deal of play in her Void Seeker release, if uh, Void Se when Kaisa has seen a lot of play during her release, Void Seeker never found its way into the decks. I was like really confusing my words there. So now uh, they've changed it, and I think this will be a little bit more viable. But we shall see. And then Bandal Tellstones, Keeper's Verdict, now is Electro Harpoon. And they said they were playing too slowly for a region that prefers to stay aggressive. So they removed their slow spell for a more aggressive one, which I do like. Uh, we got some skins here. Let me just readjust this. <laughs> I don't like doing that. I forgot I had it with all my other tabs today. So we got the Spirit Blossom Ari skin, which is a really beautiful skin. I really like the, the change. We have Spirit Blossom Evelyn, which I do love this skin as well. The freaking rabbit masks, so good. Spirit Blossom Kindred, which was also a really beautiful skin. This, I mean, the Spirit Blossom line is still really good. And then Master Yi gave him such a different look, which I absolutely love, still with the mask. Timo, fuck Timo, but still he he's a little cutie in that. And then Spirit Blossom Yasuo. When when this came out, everyone wanted to use this skin. Like goddamn. And then they have updated champion skins. So Sand Wraith Pike, which obviously well that sucks. I can't like tab on it. They didn't have it linked, but it looks good. I really I think that's such a that's really cool art. And then they have Samstar Echo, which has been updated as well. And Echo is such a cool character, so I'm glad that they updated those as they have. But um, the world's regional qualifier points have been released in this article. So if you guys want to go read it, you I will have the patch notes linked in the description below. Uh, so that way you get to see if you're one of the lucky players who qualified. And then, of course, the infamous bug fixes that they always have. And it was this was edited by three people, which is really nice. So this is a really good patch note. Uh, not a new region. Obviously, they're still working with Darken, so they still have a lot to go with that. I think in one of the patch notes, they had a, uh, not a milestone, but like a layout of how, I can't remember the specific term, 
but it's like a layout of what they were doing with Darken. But they they have a quick glance right here where it's just the buffs and the nerfs at a glance. So that way you guys can kind of see what you're looking for. But other than that, uh, that is the patch notes. And I think overall they did a decent job with some more balance changes. But, you know, Riot is never done balancing anything because that is Riot. But that is all the time I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I highly appreciate your time as always, but please do not forget to subscribe and or follow not only to my YouTube, but to my Twitch. You guys know where my YouTube is at, but you can find my Twitch at twitch.tv slash thegamedame. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.